Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be things that you should see and do while you are visiting Salem, coming from a Salem resident. So this is a request that I actually got to film just some things that you should see, some things that you should try to plan if you are going to be coming to Salem. Obviously these are not probably things that you can do anytime soon um, because we are still in the midst of a pandemic, um, but I still think it would be a good video to post just for future reference if one day you would like to come to Salem or if you want to kind of see um, if you do want to come in the first place, if there's a reason to come here. Um, so I wanted to just compile a list of things that I have enjoyed and things that I have tried over not only years of visiting as a tourist, but also um, my time living here as a resident. If somebody has lived in Salem their entire life, they may have a different opinion than I do um, because I'm someone who has just visited year after year as a tourist, um, has tried a bunch of different things, and then I have moved here and have lived here for a couple months now. Um, but these are just my opinions of things that I have tried. I've done countless tours. I've eaten at so many different restaurants, both as a vegetarian and before I was a vegetarian. So I've tried a bunch of different foods. I've done a bunch of different tours, um, and I've really gotten a good idea of what is worth your time and money and what I would consider not to be worth it. And I've looked back and thought, hmm, that wasn't really all it was cracked up to be. It seemed like it was hyped up a lot more than it actually was worth. So this is the list that I've come up with. And if you guys are interested in seeing what I think, just keep on watching. I'm going to break this video down into categories. There will be timestamps below if there's any particular area you're interested in learning about. Um, otherwise, it would just be literally me rambling on for probably an hour. So I'm going to make it into sections, starting with where to stay, things to do, food, and shops that you should definitely go to while you're here. So hopefully that makes it easier. Like I said, there will be timestamps below. So when you do come here in the future, in the future, <laughs> where should you stay? What's a good hotel to stay at? Um, I always recommend the Hawthorne Hotel, Hawthorne Hotel, if you are not staying here during the peak season, which is September, October. Do not come to the Hawthorne during peak season. You will spend $400 a night. That is crazy. That is ridiculous. Have I done it before? Yes, my boyfriend and I have stayed at the Hawthorne during peak season, which is really not financially a smart decision. Um, it's just packed and it fills up really quick. Um, it's a really nice hotel. It's super quaint, um, but the rooms are, some of them are recently redone, I noticed. I've stayed there twice. Um, the second time I stayed there, actually, I have had, I would say it was like a paranormal kind of experience. I know a lot of people say that it is haunted. There has been a show that's gone there and filmed and has done like some investigating. I don't remember what show it was. My boyfriend mentioned it once, but I don't remember what it was. Um, but they did do a episode there and I guess they deemed it haunted as well. Um, I only had that happen one out of the two times I've stayed there. It just felt like somebody was watching me while I was sleeping. And my boyfriend woke up and said he felt really weird too all night. So I don't know, take that information as you will. I think it's still a really awesome hotel. It's a super historic hotel, very, very conveniently located. Um, and usually it's reasonably priced as long as you're not going during peak season. If you do want to come during peak season, um, during October, which most people do because that's when the nightlife is the most fun, that's when there's the most to do, there's more people walking around outside, um, I would definitely recommend getting a hotel in a surrounding town and just Ubering in. It makes it so much easier and it's just way cheaper that way. Trust me, I will tell you guys, I had a bad experience at one hotel. I'm gonna put a timestamp if you wanna skip this story because it is a little long. Um, and if you don't wanna hear me ramble, you can just click that and move on to the next part of the video. I really wanted to stay at the Hotel Salem. I've always wanted to stay there because it's literally on Essex Street. Um, it's also, they have this um, rooftop um, restaurant and bar that I've wanted to go to. I've not gone there yet, um, but I always wanted to stay at the hotel nonetheless. It's really what I wanted to do. My boyfriend and I planned a trip to come up when we were looking at apartments and we got a room at the Hotel Salem. So I was so excited. The room was super nice. It was like a loft style. There was like these, What the heck was that? Did you hear that? I think that was the ice machine. Okay, never mind. That just scared me so much. I'm home alone and I just heard this crazy noise upstairs. What was I talking about? The Hotel Salem. Okay, oh my God. It's like cursed, see? Oh my God, that noise happened while I'm talking about it. So our experience at the Hotel Salem was terrible. We get there, the staff is very nice. I will say that. Very, very, very nice staff, very sweet really tried to work with us during this whole situation. Um, but anyway, we get to the hotel and they have the keys. You know how when you go to basically any modern hotel, you have the key, it's electronic, you press it to the door, the door unlocks, right? That is basically what most modern hotels are. So we get to our room, we try the key, it doesn't work. 
try again, it doesn't work, go back to the desk. So the guy comes out, he's the manager, he tries to get the key to work himself, and again, it doesn't work for him. So he's just like, you know what, I'm just gonna give you the hard key, you can just use this to get in and out of the room, no big deal. Okay, so we have the key, we're able to get into the room, and we decide to go out, go out and about, explore a little bit, have some fun, get some dinner, whatever. So I don't know why I was left in charge with the key, but for some reason I was left in charge with the key. And I actually ended up leaving it inside of the room, which usually that's not a big deal. It's just kind of annoying. You have to go to the front desk and ask for another key. So we walked up to the front desk and asked for another key. And he hands me the key card, like literally the first one that didn't work. And I was like, okay, maybe they fixed it. Like maybe this is him telling me just go and use this now. So I go back over to the room, try that and it doesn't work. So I walk back out and I hand it back to him. It's the same person that helped us in the very beginning. And I was like, um, this doesn't work still. We had the, the hard key and his eyes like got so big and they almost like popped out of his head. He was like, you lock the hard key in there. He like runs from behind the desk and he's like frantically looking around for things. He goes to the room, goes to the back, looking everywhere. And my boyfriend and I are just standing there and I was like, hmm, that was probably the only key that they had for that door. Yep, that was the only key that they had for our room. So lucky for us, we get to walk around Salem, wait for them to try to find a key. We come back and unfortunately they need to call a locksmith and he won't be able to come until the following morning. So we had to actually stay at a completely different hotel that night. Um, luckily a new hotel was literally opening that weekend. We were the first people to stay in the room that we stayed in at the new hotel, um, but we had none of our things. I was supposed to do homework that night. I wasn't able to do my homework. We didn't have any of our clothes, no toothbrush, no anything. Um, we just had to stay in this random hotel um, overnight, which kind of sucked because it was like half the price of what we were paying to stay at the Hotel Salem because it was super expensive. Um, the next morning we were still kind of driving around because the locksmith wasn't there yet. It was probably about like noon when they were able to get the room open for us and we were able to get a key. They got a spare key for the future. Um, and yeah, that is my crazy, pretty long story about how we got locked out of our hotel room staying at the Hotel Salem. Um, so yeah, I don't recommend that ho hotel to literally anybody anymore. It was such a crazy experience. I've never had that happen to me where they give me the only key that is able to access a room. That's literally nuts, but yeah. I don't recommend the Hotel Salem. That's a crazy story I have staying there. Um, I, do I do definitely recommend the Hawthorne Hotel and literally any other hotel on the outskirts of Salem if you wanna just Uber in. It makes it super easy. Welcome back to those of you who skip me talking about my interesting experience staying at the Hotel Salem. But I'm gonna move on to talking about things that you should do in Salem, things that you should try to put on your list and agenda of things that you should do. The first thing that I stress to everybody to do while they're in Salem is a night tour. Any night tour will do. I've tried so many of them and honestly, not one stood out in my mind a ton. Um, they're all pretty good. They go into um, history about the witch trials, just paranormal, you know, random shit that has happened in Salem. Um, and it's a walking tour of downtown Salem. So it's super fun. You get to see a lot of large, important places that you might have maybe forgotten to stop at when you were just walking around. It stops at the old Bering Point Cemetery. So you get to see really historical graves. Um, it also stops at the Salem Witch Trials Memorial. So you get to see all the people. Um, there's a memorial for each and every person who was essentially executed during the witch trials in 1692. So um, it's everybody who was hanged and little Giles Corey who was pressed to death unfortunately. So everybody there has a little bench, a little bench. Sorry, I don't know why I said it like that. Um, and people usually decorate them with different flowers and you could just see them and kind of think back to all the people that were killed for no reason back during the witch trial hysteria that went on in Salem, Massachusetts in that time. So um, it definitely touches on some really amazing things. You get a lot of history. I always love walking night tours. Anytime I visit a new city, I always try to see if there's a walking night tour. I just love paranormal night tours. I've been to one in Rhode Island when I was living in Providence. Um, we've been to one in Philly. So I love to do walking night tours and especially the one in Salem is nice because you get to see a lot of important places that you might have seen while you were there or you might not have. Um, but it's nice to see it nonetheless and to have somebody who's very knowledgeable about everything that went on here explain um, from their perspective what happened um, during that time. So it's really nice to have a guided tour. The next thing that I always recommend people to do is the Witch Dungeon Museum. Not to be confused with the Witch Museum or the Witch House. 
This is the Witch Dungeon Museum. Um, there are like shekels outside of the Witch Dungeon Museum. It says a huge sign about how it's air conditioned in there, which is really funny. But I guess that's a big draw for people who are coming during like the summer and like the warm times in the fall. But um, it's a big black building and there's usually a huge line down the sidewalk to get in. So essentially what happens in that one, there is a mock trial. So essentially they have the people working there um, are actors and they act out one of the trials during the witch trials when one of the girls was saying how there was a little yellow birdie that was going to come and attack her. One of the people that was on trial, I don't remember their name, but one of the women that was on trial for being a witch, um, they said that she was taking this bird and making it attack her in the courtroom and she was like, ducking all over the floor and acting like this bird was like literally attacking her. And everybody that was in watching the trial was thinking that this was real. This person was conjuring up this little bird from the devil, making it attack this person. And it was just this huge thing. And you're looking at it and watching like, oh my God, that really happened. Then what they do is they take you downstairs where they have um, a mock kind of dungeon, what the dungeons look like, where they put those people once they were um, being put on trial. So they show all the different types of cells that they would have for people, like little waiting cells that people would stay in. They would talk about how the conditions were absolutely disgusting. It was freezing, it smelled bad down there, it was always dark. Um, and yeah, sometimes you would just be in these large pens with other people, or if you were very unwealthy, you did not have a lot of money, you would have a coffin cell where you would literally have to just be standing up all the time. You had to be standing up, um, which totally blows my mind. Um, but you can just walk around, see all the little cells. They also have a piece of wood from the original um, jail, which is super, super interesting to see. But yeah, I totally recommend going and seeing that one because not only is it really interesting to see the conditions that the accused witches had to live in, but it's also really interesting to see that role play because you know it just plays into this this hysteria. You can't really understand why these all these people um, believed, especially in like a court of law that was being used as legitimate evidence was this little invisible bird that nobody else could see besides this girl, this young girl. So I think it's crazy. I'm sorry if that made no sense when I was describing it about the whole situation with the bird. I haven't done that in a really long time, like actually gone through the Witch Dungeon Museum, um, but it's really amazing. I totally recommend going and seeing that if you are trying to plan your itinerary for visiting Salem. The next place I always recommend people to visit is the House of the Seven Gables. This actually has nothing to do with the Salem Witch Trials, actually, um, but it's still super historical and is so incredibly beautiful. Um, it's really pretty. It's right by the water. So it's a little bit of a walk down from Essex Street where basically everything else is in Salem that people go to see. Um, but it's super historical because Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote the House of the Seven Gables based off of that particular house. Nathaniel Hawthorne lived in Salem. He's from Salem. Um, and he based his story off of the image of that house. Um, and you could go inside and see everything in the house is period based. So it looks like an old house would, and you could take a tour of the house. There's also like a night tour of the house. That's more like ghost spooky related. Um, if you're more interested in that, um, they also, they also moved Nathaniel Hawthorne's house to the site of the House of the Seven Gables. So you could walk inside his house as well if you wanted to see that. Um, it's not the original place where his house was, um, but they did move it there. So you can walk through his house as well. But overall, it's really, really pretty. It gives you something to do that's a little break from all the witchy things, um, but it's still really fun to do nonetheless. And it is a beautiful house. Another thing that you really should carve time into your visit to do, even if it's something that you do on your way out once you're leaving Salem, is visit Proctor's Ledge. Um, that is the spot where they actually believe um, the hangings took place. They did a lot of research into this. They thought it was in a number of different spots before they came down to this one location, which is behind a Walgreens. Is it a Walgreens or is it CVS? It's definitely a Walgreens. <laughs> um, but there is a wall and it's like a curved wall where there is a memorial essentially for all the people that were hung there. Um, so definitely go check that out if you have time to visit on your way out or on your way in. You can literally just type in Walgreens Salem. I think it's a Walgreens, let me look it up. Before I sound uneducated, Proctor's Ledge Memorial. Don't ask at Walgreens. That's what it says on TripAdvisor. So I guess don't ask people at Walgreens about it. <laughs> I don't know why they're saying that, um, but 
You're not supposed to park in the Walgreens parking lot, but I definitely have in the past and they don't really do anything about it because you walk up for two seconds, take a picture, and then you leave. Um, so I don't see it as being that much of a problem. There's really little parking there anyway, um, but you're not supposed to park there unless you are shopping at Walgreens. Um, but yeah, definitely go check that out because it's super historical. That's literally where the people were hung um, and it's very eerie, it's very, it's kind of creepy. I mean, it gives you like the creepy crawlies when you go down there to know that so many people were literally hung for no reason. It's just nuts. Um, but it's really, really cool to see while you're there because um, I think a big part of visiting Salem is just learning the history of it. Because at the end of the day, even though Salem is such a large community of people who practice witchcraft, people who are into pagan based religions or just any type of like diverse spirituality, um, that is not what Salem was back at that time. Um, it has become that now. It's more of like a commercial thing um, where it has drawn in people who do practice that because of everything that has gone on in the past. But these people were just like Puritans, you know, they believed in God and they were like, you know, all these holy people, they had nothing to do with worshiping the devil and Satan and all that they thought was going on back in the day. Um, and they were just innocent people being hung for no reason. So um, it's definitely important to pay attention to the history while you're here as well. Another fun thing to do that is not Salem related is Nightmare Gallery, um, which is wax figures. So if you've ever been to like Madame Tussauds, it's like people who are famous, like wax, wax figures of people who are famous. Whereas in Nightmare Gallery, it's wax figures of famous like horror movies, which is so, so fun. If you love Halloween, if you love horror, um, it's such a fun place to go and I totally recommend checking it out. Um, it's definitely a huge destination for people who are visiting. Another really fun thing to do in Salem is seeing locations that have been in movies. Um, I think one of the main ones that people love to do and see while they're in Salem is go to all of the Hocus Pocus filming locations. So you could go to Max's house. Um, that one's kind of far out of the way. I hit that on our way out one time. Um, but Allison's house is literally right in the center of town, like right next to the witch house. You can go see the school that they filmed at, like where they were in like the pottery kiln. Um, where else? What are some other cool ones that you can see? Oh, the, um, the school in the gymnasium. It's not a gymnasium, um, but you can go and see where they filmed that. It's really cool. There's a lot of um, forums online where you can see places that they filmed the movie Hocus Pocus. I know for me and for so many other people, Hocus Pocus was such a big and important movie and I watch it every year. Um, it's just a great movie and it's cool to see where they filmed it. A lot of other movies were filmed here as well. I know The Lords of Salem, which was by Rob Zombie. My boyfriend and I went and we saw the house that they filmed in, or at least filmed the outside of. Um, and it's really cool, you can see different places. So if there's any specific movie that you like that you know has been filmed in Salem, it's cool to like look up and see and go to the exact place that it was filmed in. So those are all the main things that I recommend doing. And I know there's probably gonna be some people saying, well, Melissa, what about the witch museum? What about the witch house? I'm gonna get into that now. So I think there are definitely very hyped up things that people feel like they have to do when they are in Salem. And they're things that are super hyped up online, on social media, and I think the two biggest ones are the Witch House and the Witch Museum. The Witch Museum is the big building with the big red window. If you've driven in Salem at night, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. It is a big fiery red window that's lit up at night um, and everybody flocks to go there during Halloween time. It is literally probably the biggest attraction that people go and see. And I can't understand why. I can't understand why, you guys. It is so boring. It is the most boring thing I have ever done in Salem. I don't recommend it at all. I think it is so overhyped. Definitely go check out the outside of it. I think the building itself is so pretty, especially at night with that red window. But actually what's inside is so boring. All they do is they shuffle you into this big, large room, and then they have these still figures, um, like mannequins, up in the corner. One section lights up, then the next section lights up, and the next section lights up, and each of the sections has its own story. They're talking about the Salem Witch Trials. And you're just watching it go around you in the room, and that's it. That's literally all that happens. It is so boring. It's my least favorite thing that I've ever done in Salem and I couldn't believe it because it was so hard to get a ticket and actually be able to go and do it and to have it be so anticlimactic. I was so bored. I think actually there is one small area at the end where you can walk through and see like the history of Salem aside from just that one room and then it goes into how 
what Salem has turned into today, how it attracts um, neo-paganism religions and stuff like that. But really, it's boring. It's really boring. <laughs> that's the best word I can use to describe it. I don't recommend seeing it at all, even though that's honestly one of the first things that comes up if you Google things to do in Salem. The next thing that I don't recommend seeing, even though everybody else in the entire world is so into this one specific place, it is the witch house. I understand it's a beautiful house. Architecturally, it's really nice to go and take pictures of. I always still to this day go and take pictures of it because I think it's so hauntingly beautiful. And the significance of it is that it is the only remaining building that exists that has ties to the witch trials. Um, but it didn't belong to somebody who was an accused witch. It didn't belong to somebody who was killed because they were accused of being a witch. It actually belonged to one of the judges, um, Jonathan Cor which I guess it's kind of interesting because it still it has ties to the witch trials. But there's really nothing in the house, like actually inside the house when you pay to go in, that has anything to do with the witch trials. All it is is decorated as if it was a period house, like it was existing in 1692, which is really, really interesting. I love period houses and going and seeing how people lived in earlier times. But if you're actually interested in seeing how houses looked and people lived in the 17th century, I totally recommend the Salem Pioneer Village way more than the witch house. The witch house is super hyped up versus Pioneer Village is about maybe like a 10 minute drive or something outside of downtown Salem. So you'd have to take an Uber um, and it's only open in certain times of the year. But it is so nice because it's actually like a little village. You get these little houses. You can go and see how people lived back in the day, what it actually was like in a small settlement versus the witch house, which is literally like picked up and put down or right in the middle of everything in Salem. It's literally right off Essex Street. Um, so you really don't get that full experience of seeing what it was like back in the day. If you really are genuinely interested in what life was like in the 17th century, I don't recommend the witch house. Um, I just think it's overhyped. You're gonna be in a long line. You're gonna spend a lot of money. I totally recommend the Salem Pioneer Village over the witch house. Definitely go and take pictures outside of the witch house though. That's totally worth it. And you don't have to pay to do that. So those are the main things that I would recommend doing in Salem, including two that I don't think are really worth the hype. Let me know what you think. Do you think that it's worth it? Would you still wanna go anyway to the witch house or to the witch museum? Let me know. That's my personal opinion. I don't recommend those to anybody I know. Um, but yeah, I'm just sharing my personal thoughts on things that I think you should do with your time and with your money while you're here visiting. The next thing I wanna talk about is food. My favorite thing ever. I have a lot to cover, so I'm gonna just jump right into it. So there are a ton of food options in Salem. It's like absolutely endless, um, especially now that I'm a vegetarian, I have been noticing a lot more options than I have than I thought I did. Um, so I definitely will cover, cover places that have vegetarian and vegan options if you're looking for that specifically, as well as other ones that I have really enjoyed going even before I was vegetarian. The first one I'm gonna talk about is Flying Saucer, um, which is a pizza restaurant. They also have some other things, um, but predominantly it is a pizza restaurant. They have a ton of vegan options and everything in the restaurant is like sci-fi themed. So if you're into sci-fi movies and just want to be somewhere really cool that has great ciders, great beers, great drinks, um, Flying Saucer is a really awesome place to go. You just get literally like a normal cheese pizza and space balls, really good. The next place I recommend you guys to go um, is so awesome. I actually remember driving by years ago and just, we didn't have time to stop, but it is Bit Bar. It is a barcade. So it's a bar, but it's also an arcade. They have arcade games, they have pinball. You can play all the games and eat. Um, and it's so, so fun there. I absolutely love going. The drinks there are really good as well. Um, it's just a really fun time. Personally, what I get now that I'm vegetarian, um, I get the Tetris Tots. Um, they're tater tots and I get them loaded with everything except for bacon. And then we also get the like big pretzel with the beer cheese. It's so good. Their beer cheese is so bomb. Um, I dip the um, Tetris tots in them as well. Oh, so good. But honestly, that's more so if you are looking for like little nibbles and just are more interested in drinking. Um, because if you're vegetarian, there's really not many other options there. Another really great place is Gulu Gulu Cafe. Um, I've heard they have good coffee, but I've never gotten coffee there before. I go there for their soups. They often have different um, types of vegan soups as well. The best that I've had is the broccoli cheddar um, and we get a grilled cheese and just dip it in there. Mm, amazing, so good. It's really centrally located as well. It's right next to Flying Saucer um, and it's really nice. 
Ugh, I gotta get comfy now because I've been talking for a long time. Um, Gulu Gulu also has um, different drink options as well. I feel like everywhere in Salem has drink options because I just want everyone to have a good time. The next place that's really good if you want some Mexican food is Howling Wolf Taqueria. I think that's how you say that. Um, if I'm wrong, correct me, please. They have amazing food. Um, I only get cheese quesadillas because I eat like a five-year-old, but it's really, really good. The rice is really, really good. The margaritas are really, really good. It's kind of hard to get in there though since they don't take any reservations. It's first come, first serve. So if you're trying to get there during Halloween, good luck. I've never been able to get in during the Halloween season because it is that good and it gets that packed. Um, but it's really awesome if you do come here during kind of like an off season time. Um, great if you want some Mexican food. For breakfast, my boyfriend and I always go to Red's. Again, it's another hard one to get into if it's during, I feel like everything's hard to get into if it's during um, the Halloween season. Everything's just hard to get into if you don't have a reservation, you have to wait in lines. You'll just have like a long wait time in order to get anywhere for food. Um, but it's so worth it. Red's is so cute. It's really historical as well. George Washington actually ate at Red's at some point in his life. Um, and it's really cute. They have really good food, um, good breakfast foods. I always just get like egg and cheese on a bagel or something like that, something very basic. Um, but they have a lot of options for vegetarians. Not as many for vegan though, if you are vegan, um, maybe just check out the menus first. But I know for vegetarian, they do have a lot of options. If you are vegetarian or vegan, listen to me right now. The Boston Hot Dog Company is the place to be. I had never tried this before I moved here, but they have a meatless hot dog and it tastes so freaking good. I just have it with some, um, what is it? Ketchup and mustard, I do both. Um, a little bit of both, a little cocktail of both. And it is so good. Um, blown away by how much it actually takes like a hot dog. It tastes really good. Um, my boyfriend and I are both vegetarian and we both really enjoyed it. I think we got it with like fries on the side or something. Um, it was a really good, easy, quick meal. Another amazing place. I know I'm talking so much about food and I've spent probably the majority of time talking about food at this point, um, but it's a huge part of coming to Salem and just visiting anywhere. You have to have good food. Um, definitely, definitely check out Rockefellers, especially if you're coming during the Halloween season because the nightlife there is so fun during Halloween. They usually have a band playing. It's packed, the dance floor's packed, the bar's making amazing drinks. Um, it's just awesome. The drinks there are phenomenal. Um, usually I'll get like mac and cheese or a flatbread um, and it's just really awesome. Honestly, the drinks are the main reason why I go there. I got one once, it has like edible, um, like glitter in it and it looks so cool. There's like a, um, a poison apple one I've had once. They have mystery shots during Halloween. Honestly, it's such a good time, um, especially during Halloween season. If you're looking for a fun nightlife, definitely check out Rockefellers um, and the food's good too. So just check it out, it's right on Essex Street. The last three are just like special ones in my heart. They're not like food places um, specifically, but you can get food. I, let me just get into it. The first is Jody B Bakes. Let me tell you guys, you need to stop at Jody B's when you come to Salem. It is amazing. It's in the museum garage, the museum place garage, literally in the Witch City Mall. Um, there's a lot of shops in there that people I feel like overlook. They just don't really pay attention to. Um, but Jody B's is in there as well. So if you park in the garage, you can literally just walk right down. They have vegetarian and vegan pastries and different types of stuff. It's a bakery. So the cupcakes are phenomenal. They have cookies, brownies. Um, and I will say the cupcakes that I had there, um, there was one particular one. It was like chocolate with like cookie dough, um, not like actual cookie dough, but like cookie dough flavored frosting. Hands down, out of every cupcake I've tried in the whole world, vegan or not, it is the best cupcake I've had ever. Um, and the people who work there are so nice. Um, it's just an amazing little shop. They're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, but if you're there on weekend or something, definitely check it out. It's so good, um, definitely worth it. The next place is my favorite coffee shop in Salem. It is called Jaho. It's down on Derby Street, so by the water. Um, it's really fun to walk down that way too. There's like a lot of fun things to see. And I feel like people don't often veer down that way because they're so used to just Essex Street. Um, definitely take a walk down. Jaho is amazing. Um, the coffee there is amazing. I've been like going crazy over the peppermint mocha. Obviously it's still like cold out and I, I just love a good peppermint mocha during this time of year. Um, best coffee hands down that I've had. Better than Dunkin', better than Starbucks. It's so good. I get decaf because I'm not a big coffee drinker. I just like, you know, sweet creamer basically. Um, and it's super creamy. It's a latte, so it's super, super fluffy and whippy. And what's the word for that? It's like whipped. It's nice. It's really, really good. Um, and they also have alcohol, so you could mix and make your drinks spiked if you want. 
Um, it's really cool in there. They have some pastries and snacks and stuff like that. Um, so definitely if you wanna just munch on something, grab a coffee, grab some bubble tea, grab a tea, whatever you want. Maybe if you just want a shot of something, head down to Jaho on Derby Street. It's really awesome. And the final place I recommend, it's also down the same area on Derby Street. It's called Ye Old Pepper Company. I'm not sure why it's called that. I'll have to look into it, but essentially it is America's oldest candy shop, which is so cool. I've never heard of that before. I just recently found out about it when we moved here. Before that, I had never heard about it before, um, but it is this adorable little gem of a store where you can get really, really old candy that they used to sell back in the day. One of the ones that I really like, um, which is the authentic old candy, they make it the same exact way that they did 200 years ago. It's called a Gibraltar and it is a lemon candy that literally tastes like a lemon snow cone or like an Italian ice, like a lemon Italian ice, but not cold. That's exactly what it tastes like. It's so weird, but it's so good. Um, and I love it. They sell them there, they're called Gibraltars. They also have um, a really classic old candy that is like a molasses stick. I've never tried that one. I don't like molasses, but they have these really two old candies that are made the exact same way that they were hundreds of years ago um, among a bunch of other candy and fudge and chocolates that you can try there, but it is America's oldest candy shop. So definitely check it out if you have time. I'm saying check it out, check it out, check it out. Take a shot every time I say check it out during this video. Next, I'm gonna get into shops. Where should you shop? I mean, honestly, I can just leave that open because literally any store that you walk in in Salem is gonna be so cool. It's gonna be so fun. The really cool place to stop into is Hive and Forge. Um, that's a really great place if you're looking for like different types of bones, taxidermy. They also have um, soaps, some jewelry. It's kind of a little bit of everything. They have a lot of stuff in there. It's a really cool place to check out. Um, I personally enjoy taxidermy, some taxidermy things, only if the um, animal has died of natural causes. It's like a fine line, I guess, if you're vegetarian between, you know, liking things that are taxidermy, collecting dead things, I guess, like I do. Um, and not wanting an animal to be hurt for it. So I definitely support taxidermy and want to purchase things as long as they are not killed for the purpose of creating taxidermy art um, because I just don't agree with that. I will only purchase from vendors who have sourced their things from naturally deceased animals. Um, so that's something that matters to me and um, yeah, I still like them a lot. So if you like that things too and you wanna give them a new life, once they are dead, give their bodies a new life while their souls move on to their next life, whatever that may be, um, definitely check out Hive and Forge. The next place I recommend is Crow Haven Corner. Um, Lorelai, the owner, is really awesome. You might run into her. Um, I've seen her on a couple shows actually, but she's like literally being played on a TV screen out front too during like peak season. Um, she does like love spells and it's just really fun in there. Um, there's a lot of cool, very witchy related things. Um, Village Silversmith is more stones, um, metaphysical, but also geological, um, just collecting stones, rocks, and jewelry. Whereas Crowhaven is like witchcraft. You're gonna go there to get stuff for your spells and whatnot. Omen is like the same way. They have stuff for spells. You can get um, different types of herbs and stuff like that there. Um, but yeah, I love Crowhaven. It's so fun to just stop in. It's a big, big black building um, with purple, purple lights all around it. And it is the first witchcraft shop in Salem. So it is definitely historic and a really fun place to stop in if you have time. Outside of that shop as well, they always are selling tickets for the night tours. Basically anywhere you could buy tickets for night tours, there's so many different companies that offer them. But if you would rather do something like in person so you know um, and have confirmation from an actual person and not just do the whole transaction online, definitely go in front of Crow Haven Corner. They have a little booth that has information about the night tour um, that that particular company offers. Right next to Crow Haven is Why Not Wands. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It's like a wand shop. Essentially, it's all Harry Potter. If you love Harry Potter, go into this store. It is so cute. They have a bunch of things for the different houses. So if you want a Slytherin, you know, scarf or a sweatshirt or something, if you're just into Harry Potter and wizardry and just that type of mysticalness of being a wizard um, and not really into actually practicing any type of um, magic or type of religion or anything like that. If you just are into like magic and stuff that has to do with Harry Potter, definitely check out Why Not Swans. I really don't know if that's how you say it, I'm sorry. It's really nice. They have butter beer there. It tastes really good. They have the Witch Board Museum in the back as well. It's literally a museum about 
um, Ouija boards. It's really tiny, it's like 10 bucks, and you could just like walk through and look at them. Um, there's really not much to it, but it's really cute for like photo ops. Recently, I just posted a picture, my boyfriend and I walked through there just because we were bored one day and wanted to do it. Um, it's something to do, it's really cute, and it's in the back of the Why Not to Wands. Why not? That's definitely not how you say it, but why not? Why not check it out? All right, I totally messed it up, you guys. It's like I don't even live here, right? <laughs> well, anyway, there are two Harry Potter shops literally right next to each other. Um, remember, Salem is actually the one that has the Witch Board Museum inside of it. Um, the wand shop pretty much basically just has wands in it, but both of them are Harry Potter themed, so if you like Harry Potter, you might want to check them both out. Also on Essex Street, a little farther down the way, Coven's Cottage is seriously the cutest shop ever. Please, please go and look. There's always a line outside. There's a line, like I said, outside of everything during Salem um, to get in, just because it gets so busy. But it's so cute in there. They have herbs hanging all from the ceilings. Um, they're very strict about making sure you keep your phone off so that you could be completely in the moment and completely look at everything that they have to offer in the store. Again, it's a very like witchy, related store so if you want to get some herbs if you want to get candles um, they have a deer bone jaw that's like one of the first things I've ever bought from there was this deer jaw bone um, they just have a bunch of really cool things some books some jewelry a little bit of everything in there if you're looking to get some fashion items while you're in Salem if you want to step up your goth game you could head down to die with your boots on they have some really awesome options um, they have a bunch I mean it's in the title die with your boots on there's a bunch of different boots they carry demonia there um, they carry a bunch of different outfits they have some stuff there that literally looks like bleedle juice it's really cute um, everything in there is basically black so if you're looking to get your color options um, this is not the store for you Everything's basically black. It's just amazing. They're playing some awesome music in there. It's a cool environment um, and I love stopping in there. I just went there, down there um, not too long ago to get some Demania uh, combat boots because I'm trying to compare them, compare them to my vegan Doc Martens that I have. New video coming soon. Keep an eye out for it. I'm gonna test the two and compare them and see which is better. Um, but yeah, they have a lot of awesome stuff there. Totally recommend checking it out if you want some fashion items. They also sell online though, so if you just wanna check it out um, while you're home, you can do that as well and shop online. The final shop I recommend checking out is down on Derby Street and it's called Pyramid Books. They have really good decorations for decorating your house. And like it says in the, t in the name of the company, Pyramid Books, they sell books. Um, sometimes you could get a good deal on them. Sometimes they could be a little pricey. I always check Amazon just to see. Sometimes you'll get a, a better deal there. I got my little mini deck of tarot cards there. Um, honestly, it's just purely for aesthetics. They're adorable, but they have a bunch of cute stuff like that, a bunch of different tarot cards. Um, that's probably the biggest draw, I would say. Um, they have so many different decks to choose from. Um, really cool store to stop in if you're down that way. So those are all my main recommendations of things to do, places to see, food to eat while you're in Salem. I hope that things can go back to, I guess, normal. I don't know what normal is anymore, um, but I hope you know we can be safe enough where things can somewhat be back to normal and people could come and visit again and really experience Salem because if you haven't been to Salem yet, it's seriously so amazing. I love talking about things that are able to do here. I love talking about places to go. Um, it's really an amazing place and I hope people can come visit again. So that's it for now. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Haha, -ha, my camera has been blinking at me that it has been on low battery for the past half hour and it has not died. So I succeeded.